hello uh, in this lecture I am gonna teach you about the basics of computer network if a computer is able to send some data to another computer then it is uh, it may be termed as an end device in a computer network right but this data transfer must follow a set of protocols now you may ask what is a protocol a protocol is a set of rules which the computers must follow in order to execute proper data transfer now transfer of data is okay but whether the data is valid it is an it can be uh, uh, termed transformed into information or not depends on the protocols if suppose uh, two people are talking to each other one is speaking French and one is speaking English and neither understands the other language so both are transmitting data towards each other but none is uh, giving a, a valid or understandable information to the other person only data has been transferred so it is of no use so the both the person must follow a protocol okay the protocol is that it must follow a set of rules now uh, suppose I am uh, filling up a form in a bank to uh, open a bank account so uh, I communicate with them I send my data that is my data but it is not uh, guaranteed that I will get an acknowledgement back from the bank that we have received the form it is not always possible it won't happen that we are filling up the form sending it and the bank will eventually within a time tell that yes I have received the form and then after that they will uh, uh, create a bank account no so this is a different set of protocols and suppose uh, you are a student in a classroom now here is another girl whom you want to talk now you go and you go ahead and say hi now when she listens and she ignores you you are like nah what's this so similarly whenever two people are talking they both expect a reply an answer from the other person and if they don't get the communication is obviously unsuccessful so this is another type of communication which follow another set of protocols it requires an acknowledgement a reply back similarly different types of uh, applications or different uses in computer for different uh, suppose mail or either uh, uh, video ch conferencing video chatting video or voice conferencing they all require different types of protocols which have different rules for data transmission so we will discuss some rules uh, before discussing the rule first let me tell you what a socket is and what po a port is we all know the OSI layer model now uh, ev every computer has various applications suppose these applications 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and the receiver may also have various applications suppose one of the applications is Skype okay and you are uh, doing a video conferencing from the sender to receiver so data is being transmitted from here to here and from here to here as well so the, the information or the data should go from the Skype application of the receiver to the Skype application of the sender only no other application sh should go so uh, IP address is the address which decides uh, to which computer should go it has gone to the com right computer but which application it should go is decided by the port address okay so every uh, application has a predefined port address top of the transport layer at the center and the receiver side while sending out data at from uh, at the sender side the job of the transport layer is to add the source port and the destination port suppose network layer network layer passes a packet of data to the transport layer what transport layer will do it will forward a segment segment is what segment is equal to segment is source port plus destination port plus the data right so uh, after it is converted into segment it is it is forwarded to the next layer so that it can be transmitted similarly at the receivers end 
the segment is then broken down into data and the port address by the transport layer and the transport layer identifies the port address uh, and by the port address it recognizes to which application it should send the data so the transport layer sends the data with information such that it would uh, go to the right application that is to skype so that is how it works so the different types of protocols used for data communications are such as stop and wait protocol go back and protocol and selective repeat protocol proto call all these three are protocols okay so first let us discuss what is stop and wait protocol okay so stop and wait why the name stop and wait in stop and wait suppose this is the sender and this is the receiver okay I'm creating a timeline right here this is the sender side this is the receiver side and this is a timeline which would proceed in the downward direction okay uh, these all the three protocols what they do is suppose there is a large amount of data which needs to be transferred in, uh, in earlier times uh, what used to be done was the whole data was sent together and what was the disadvantage is that if the whole data is lost then again the whole data has to be prepared and sent which would be very uh, time taking and inefficient so uh, the new protocols which came up they evolved in such a way such that all the data were broken into smaller parts known as packets these packets were being sent one by one if uh, one of the packets is lost then the packet is retransmitted such that it now becomes reliable so uh, this is a more efficient way of transferring the data so all the three protocols transfer data by packet by packet and after the last packet is sent and received by the receiver all the data is accumulated and the result, result is shown so suppose uh, I have these packets suppose each packet contains a letter suppose one letter each A B C D E F G H suppose there are eight packets now the sender sends one packet A now the sender won't send the next packet until and unless the receiver sends an acknowledgement for A that yes I, you have sent me A and ha I have received A now send me the next packet as soon as this acknowledgement is received it would send the next packet to the sender okay so what is it doing it is sending and then waiting for the acknowledgement so therefore the name stop and wait stop don't send a, don't send any more packets and wait for the acknowledgement this is the basic uh, funda what you are seeing that with stop, without receiving any acknowledgement the sender can send at most one packet at a time at most one pa packet is being processed at a time not more than one packet so here it is said that the window size at the sender that means the number of packets it can send without receiving any acknowledgement is one only one packet it could send without receiving any acknowledgement so window side at the sender's sender uh, half is one and similarly window side at receiver side is also one it can only receive one packet and send the acknowledgement and wait for the next packet not more than one packet is being received by the receiver at a time okay so suppose again this is a timeline sender sends the packet a right now if the acknowledgement being sent by the receiver is lost in transit okay so uh, the since the sender is stopping and waiting it is waiting for the acknowledgement uh, and until and unless the acknowledgement is received it won't send the next packet and see the acknowledgement has been lost now the receiver also doesn't know that his acknowledgement is lost now what will happen it may fall in a deadlock 
so to avoid such a situation to avoid a deadlock sender for each packet assigns a timer it will wait until unless unless this time finishes as soon as this time finishes and the acknowledgement is not received within this time it would assume that either the acknowledgement is lost or the packet was lost so at the end of the uh, timer if the acknowledgement has not been received it would send the packet a once again okay so uh, and if the acknowledgement would have been received within that time then then uh, the timer would have been abolished and the next packet would have been sent suppose b and the timer for b would have been started right so see here that uh, first a is received so the send the receiver stores a then b is received so the receiver stores b now acknowledgement of b is suppose lost so the sender sends b again okay now see the acknowledgement bus was lost the packet was not lost and the receiver still assumes that i have sent the acknowledgement acknowledgement has sent and the next packet is coming but this is the same packet and the same packet being received by the receiver is again stored so here we are facing duplicate packets in the sender which which is corrupting the data so this kind of situation is avoided using sequence number sequence number is a continuous uh, flow of number for each packet it is assigned which such that uh, the situation of, is avoided let me explain it properly to you for stop and wait i am telling you that it is 0 1 0 1 0 1 this is the sequence of the numbers as many packets uh, would be there as many zeros and ones would be there one after the other now how is it avoiding the deadlock the deadlock situation it is avoiding such in such a way that the sequence number at both the sender and the receiver's end would be maintained uh, uh, simultaneously every time the first packet is being sent it would send it would be sent with the sequence number of zero so for the first packet when the receiver has not received any packet the sequence number it would be expecting let me create a column here expecting sequence number it would be expecting what sequence number for the first time zero and let me create a column received sequence number okay so now let's see how this avoids the situation first packet would be what a with sequence number what zero what has been received zero what was it expecting zero since it was expecting and it has received zero it knows that correct data has been received it stores a after it's zero has been received it knows that next sequence number would be one so it is not expecting one okay now sender is waiting for the acknowledgement timer is running suppose the acknowledgement sent by receiver is lost so it sends a again suppose the timer times out and therefore the sender sends a with sequence number zero again now what the what sequence number it has received it has received zero but what was it expecting it was expecting one since this expectation and received sequence number does not match it it uh, identifies that the packet received now is uh, incorrect or duplicate so it discards the data and does not store it so in this way it avoids duplicate data and now suppose the packet was itself not sent packet was lost okay so after the timeout again it would send the packet so because sender is assuming that it has sent the packet and uh, acknowledgement has not uh, not been received so it would since it would again send the packet a0 and the packet was not received by the receiver so expecting se uh, sequence number would be 0 only uh, and 0 is being received then therefore it matches and then a would be saved so in this way stop and wait uh, is uh, executed using zeros and ones since uh, the window size is only one at the sender side so only two sequence numbers is used zero and one because at a time we are dealing with only one packet at a time we are dealing with only one packet so uh, the, the current packet the current packet sequence number and the next packet sequence number should be different so that 
the duplicate packet situation is avoided and when there was no sequence number or uh, in other words say all the sequence numbers are same we i had shown you earlier that it had uh, come to a condition in which duplicate packets were there if we use sequence number suppose 0 1 2 0 1 2 or 0 1 2 3 0 1 2 3 we increase the maximum sequence size then also there is no problem but why increase our work when we can deal with lesser numbers right so this is top and width the packet sent is like this this is the header this is the data and this is the this is your trailer where is the acknowledgement usually consists of header and the trailer only data is not present okay next I am going to discuss the sliding window protocols the two sliding window protocols that we will discuss are go back end and selective repeat okay first we will discuss about the go back and sliding window protocol three main features of go back n are number one the sender window size here as you may recall in stop and wait the sender window size was equal to one but in go back n sender window size is equal to n therefore the name go back n why go back i'll explain it to you later the second feature is that receiver window size as it was in stop and wait is equal to what is 1 and the third is that it receives usually it receives cumulative acknowledgement okay these are the th in three features now what is a cumulative acknowledgement there are basically two kinds of acknowledgement one is cumulative and the other is individual first let, let me uh, explain you what is individual we had seen in stop and wait it was an individual acknowledgement protocol in individual it means that for every packet received by the receiver from the sender the receiver would send an acknowledgement and it would happen for each and every packet packet a packet b for every packet an acknowledgement would be sent this is individual acknowledgement now suppose the sender is sending packet 1 then packet 2 then packet 3 and after a certain amount of time the receiver would send an acknowledgement which would acknowledge all the packets above to say that the receiver has received all the packets above this is basically a cumulative acknowledgement the advantage of cumulative acknowledgement is that it uh, it involves less traffic see in, whereas in individual three acknowledgements for three packets are being sent in cumulative only one acknowledgement is being sent for the three packets so it has less traffic and the disadvantage is that suppose the cumulative acknowledgement since it is a single packet if a single packet is lost then the acknowledgement for all the other packets will be lost so it is relatively less reliable okay advantages higher reliability and disadvantages more traffic okay now this you have understood that an cumulative acknowledgement uh, acknowledgement has is being sent for more than one packet but what is the factor that decides after how much time or after receiving how many packets the cumulative acknowledgement would, would be sent usually a timer is set on the receiver side every time and within that time frame for all the number of packets received within that time frame after the time ends and cumulative acknowledgement is sent for all those 
and as soon as this timer ends another timer is initiated and all the hackers received in this time frame would be acknowledged after the uh, time ends so in this way cumulative acknowledgement is proceeded so we are seeing in go back and there is a timer at the sender side as well for uh, tracking the timeout of the packets and there is a timer at the receiver side as well that is acknowledgement timer and at sender side it is timeout timer if acknowledgement timer is too much greater then there will be a timeout see because suppose this is the timeout timer for a and this is the acknowledgement timer which is ending after the timeout timer it would obviously send the acknowledgement after this time this acknowledgement timer ends and before it sends the timeout timer would, would run out so uh, the packet would send would be sent again unnecessarily so either the timeout timer should be long enough or the acknowledgement timer should be short enough and also the acknowledgement acknowledgement timer if it is too less then acknowledgement for every packet will would be sent suppose it is too less like this like this like this like this so for every packet acknowledgement is being sent then it becomes an individual acknowledgement it does not uh, continue to be a cumulative acknowledgement right the receivers window size is n here and the sender's window size is 1 the sequence number here the maximum sequence number should be at least n plus 1 that why i'm gonna explain you now suppose let us suppose that we are not having it n plus 1 let us suppose we have we keep the maximum sequence size as n now let us suppose the window size at sender is 3 that is suppose we are in uh, implementing go back 3 okay and maximum sequence size is also 3 that means 0 1 2 like this 0 1 2 0 1 2 the sequence would go on okay okay so suppose here every packet contains a character a b c d e f g h like this okay so the sequence numbers would be 0 1 2 0 1 2 0 1 like this this is the sender and this is the receiver here i am creating a column for expecting sequence number and received sequence number and a queue which tells us which packets have been accepted okay so initially the window would be like this since the window size is 3 it is uh, allowed to send 3 packets without receiving any acknowledgement so 3 packets would be sent A then B and then C right now suppose this is the timeout timer for each packet there is a timeout timer ok and this is the acknowledgement timer suppose now the receiver won't send any acknowledgement before this time ends ok and until and unless an acknowledgement is sent on this side since it is sending acknowledgement for all the three packets for all the three packets it is sending an acknowledgement the receiver is the, sen the sender is waiting for acknowledgement for any of the packets and it has not received acknowledgement for any of the packets so uh, it won't send any more packets uh, and the window would remain at this fixed position only now suppose it has sent an acknowledgement within the time frame suppose okay and uh, uh, since it has re received the packet it was expecting first it was expecting sequence number 0 what was received a with sequence number 0 so 0 was received it matched it stored a it received 1 it was expecting 1 received 1 b was stored then it was expecting 2 and it received also 2 c 2 c so it stored c but acknowledgement now is being sent now suppose this acknowledgement was not sent and the packet got lost in the transit 
Now what will happen? Then uh, receiver uh, thinks that it has sent the acknowledgement for all the pack all the three packets. Now it won't send any more acknowledgement. The timer is like this going on, going on. But uh, since it has sent already, it won't send again. But the sender uh, thinks that may maybe the packet was lost, and after the timeout, it sends again zero. After second timeout, it sends second one, and then again two with sequence number zero, B with sequence number one, and C with sequence number two. Now again the receiver. Receive 0, 1, 2. After 0, 1, and 2, this sequence number, what would it expect? Since the sequence numbers are 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, it would expect 0. After 2, 0 would come. And what did it receive? It received 0. It matched. So it would store, store A. Then it would store uh, 1, 1, B. Then it would expect 2. 2 is coming. It would store C. So what? Again, here also we are seeing that since sequence number is a maintained duplicate, data is stored and this situation must be avoided that is why the sequence number we keep always greater than or equal to n plus 1 okay so the sequence number for gb3 would be maximum sequence size would be 4 that means 0 1 2 3 then again 0 1 2 3 like this it goes on okay so the sequence numbers here would be 0 1 would be with b 2 with c 3 with d then again 0 for e, 1, 2, 3 and so on the side the window would be fixed at this position at the starting at the start of the uh, data transmission now again I am creating a timeline this is the sender this is the receiver now again check let let's check the duplicate packets uh, would now again let us check that the condition of duplicate pa packets would occur or not now suppose again that situation a then b and then c it was expecting zeros one two it received zero one two in the queue it stored a b c but the acknowledgement cumulative acknowledgement got lost after the timeout it again sent a b and c now after two what would it be expecting it would be expecting three but after the after resending the package the sender would have sent what zero a with zero okay so it mismatched it got discarded then what would it expect it would still expect three because it wants three after this but what would it get it would get b with sequence number one discarded it wants three it would receive two discarded and while discarding it would also keep track what packets are being received and after the timer it would send again send the acknowledgement that I have received I want packet number 3 again cumulative acknowledgement would be sent and uh, for once at least the acknowledgement would, re would be received at the center ok so as soon as the acknowledgement would be received for all the 3 packets if it, is, it has received the window would slide 3 forward and then the sender would send D, E and F. What is the sequence number attached with D? It is 3. It was expecting 3. It received 3. It got accepted. Now D would be uh, stored. Then it would expect again 0. E would with 0 uh, sequence number would be received. It would match. Again it would be a story and like this it would go on. This is one of the situations which could occur and uh, using sequence number greater than or equal to n plus 1 we, we are avoiding the uh, duplicate packet situation let, now let us discuss some more situation which situations which can occur in go back n protocol now let us look at this situation currently the window has three packets since it is gb3 go back 3 so the sender would send all the three packets to the receiver c a with sequence number 0 b with sequence number 1 and C with sequence number 2. Firstly, what the receiver would be expecting is 0. Since the receiver window size is 1, it would be dealing only with one packet at a time. Suppose the first packet got lost, right? So, uh, what would be the first packet that the receiver would receive? It would be B with sequence number 1. Does it match? No. So, it would be discarded. Then what would be the sequence number? 
that would be received it would be 2 and it was expecting 0 then again would be discarded but uh, acknowledgement would be sent that I want 0 I want 0 and that acknowledgement would be sent after the acknowledgement timer ok so whether or not this is sent within the time frame or after the time frame that is timeout if it is sent after the time frame these all the three packets would be sent after the timeout and if it was sent within the time frame then it knows that uh, acknowledgement for zero that means I want zero is being received none of the packets was transmitted so uh, it would send all the three packets again again A with zero B with one C with zero, two it was it was expecting zero then it would receive zero a successfully gets transmitted now let us examine another situation suppose uh, packet a sent in sequence number zero let me rub all these uh, what would it expect zero and it received zero it would accept it okay then packet number uh, two is sent with acknowledgement with sequence number sorry one packet b but see that uh, acknowledgement timer has ended here only before it received the second packet so it will uh, send the acknowledgement cumulative acknowledgement and how many acknowledgements would it uh, consist of it would consist of only one acknowledgement that is for a that is first packet with sequence number zero so uh, when the uh, sender receives this acknowledgement that one packet has been sent it shift the window by one right so this window comes here and at a time without receiving any acknowledgements i said earlier also that the sender can send at most all the packets in the window now so how many packets are in the window three b c and d b it has sent after that it would send c also after that it would send d also okay d with acknowledgement number three C with acknowledgement number 2 acknowledgement number ok after 0 it would be expecting 1 what it receives B with acknowledgement 1 yes it uh, accepts it then it would receive 2 2 expected received then it would send acknowledgement that yes I have received uh, B and C with the package so the window would now shift by 2 right as soon as the window shifts, uh, the sender would send E and F. Okay. Then E with acknowledgement 0, F with acknowledgement 1. It would expect uh, after this 3 and D is received 3. Okay. Then see here again it times out. And acknowledgement is sent. Then window again shifts by 1. E, F, G. Like this it goes on. Right. Now let us go two steps back where it had sent D and then E since D, E and F all are together in one window it would it can send all the three packets without receiving acknowledgement for any I mean for the disturbance in the background ok uh, it would send acknowledge it would send these three packets without receiving any acknowledgement uh, what was it expecting uh, three and it received three okay then it also sent e it also sent f it was it is zero it received zero it was expecting one it received one but suppose at this portion where suppose the suppose the cumulative acknowledgement that was supposed to be sent at the end of this timer got lost okay and uh, let us suppose that this acknowledgement was sent but since the acknowledgement for this timer, the, for this packet, was not received, even though these were received, the uh, receiver would consider to send the whole window again. So it would, after this, it would send D, E, and F once again. So whenever an acknowledgement is lost, the sender sends all the packets in the in the window again. Therefore, it is named as go back and and means all the packets in the window go back and suppose the system uh, implements go back 3 GB3 it is supposed to send 10 packets 
सो वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन वी एज्यूम दैट एवरी फिफ्थ पैकेट इज लॉस तो क्वेश्चन में अराइज दैट हाउ मैनी पैकेट्स वुड बी सेंड कलेक्टिवली इन एन आइडियल सिचुएशन टेन पैकेट्स वुड हैव बीन सेंड बट सिंस एवरी फिफ्थ पैकेट इज लॉस्ट मोर देन टेन पैकेट्स वुड बी सेंड सो फॉर सेंडिंग द होल डेटा कलेक्टिवली हाउ मैनी पैकेट्स वुड बी सेंड दैट दैट कैन बी अ क्वेश्चन दैट यू मे फेस इन एनी ऑफ द एग्जाम्स लेट एस नाउ ड्रॉ द सिचुएशन इन द स्टार्टिंग क्वेश्चन वन टू एंड थ्री पैकेट्स वुड बी इन द विंडो एंड वी सी दैट द फिफ्थ पैकेट विल गेट लॉस सो वन टू थ्री वोट गेट लॉस वन टू थ्री वुड बी ट्रांसलेटेड एंड देर फोर द विंडो वुड स्लाइड फॉरवर्ड राइट फिफ्थ पैकेट इज गेटिंग लॉस सो फोर वुड ऑल्सो गेट ट्रांसमिटेड विंडो विड अगेन स्लाइड फॉरवर्ड बट फिफ्थ पैकेट इज नॉट गेटिंग ट्रांसमिटेड एंड अकॉर्डिंगली द एक्नोलेजमेंट इज नॉट रिसीव सो वट हैपन्स is that again the whole window we i i already told you that the whole window will get transmitted and go back and so again 5 6 and 7 would get sent okay so again the fifth packet would be lost and now the packet that would be lost is 1 2 3 4 5 this one so since this is now in the window fifth and sixth fifth and sixth would be sent then 7 8 and 9 विंडो वुड बी सेंड अगेन ओके सेवन एट नाइन अगेन नाउ विच पैकेट वुड बी लॉस्ट वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव दिस पैकेट एंड देन सेवन एट वुड बी ट्रांसमिटेड नाइन टेन वुड बी इन द विंडो देर फोर नाइन टेन वुड बी सेंड अगेन सो एट दिस पोजिशन वन टू थ्री नो मोर फिफ्थ पैकेट सो एवरी पैकेट हैज बीन ट्रांसमिटेड सो in overall overall how many packets packets are getting transmitted 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 i'm sorry i counted it wrong it is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 12 13 14 15 16 and 18 in order to send 10 packets in go back and 18 packets are getting transmitted if every fifth packet is lost so this was all you need you needed to know about go back and okay we may also face questions like suppose it is said that window size at the senders end is equal to n in go back and then what should be the minimum sequence number okay minimum uh, value of maximum sequence size so we know that in go back and the window window uh, size at the receivers end is 1 and the sender side is n so the minimum value for maximum sequence size is equal to n plus 1 okay uh, another question another type of question may be like uh, it is said that the maximum sequence size the minimum value for this is equal to n then what is the maximum value for the window size so we know that at the receiver's end it is uh, one window size and let us suppose uh, at the sender side it is x and uh, this x plus 1 and maximum sequence size should be Greater than or equal to x plus one, and maximum sequence size is n. So x is less than or equal to n minus one. So maximum window size of uh, at the receiver's end can be n minus one. And uh, now another question can be: suppose the, max, uh, the all the sequence numbers, like there are four sequence numbers, they uh, uh, require k bits to be uh, represented. So what is the maximum window size at the receiver end if they require k bits then the number of sequence numbers formed using k bits can be 2 to the power k so the uh, so, uh, so like the previous problem the maximum window size window size at the sender's end could be 2 to the power k minus 1 okay now this was all about go back and now we would be uh, learning about selective repeat protocol now selective repeat like go back and selective repeat also has three main features uh, what are those number 1 the window size at the sender's end must be greater than or equal to 1 like it was in uh, go back and if it becomes equal to 1 then it would definitely become stop and wait second is 
that uh, the window size at the receiver's end unlike stop end width and go back end it is equal to the window size at the sender's end right and the third feature is that in selective repeat it sends individual acknowledgement not cumulative okay here it sends individual acknowledgement okay so in go back and we had seen that i uh, suppose uh, go back it was we were uh, discussing about go back 3 n equal to 3 here also uh, for you to understand it more easily we would uh, take n equal to 3 for select repeat as well so window size at receiver's end is 3 suppose and therefore the window size at sorry window size size at sender's end would be 3 then definitely window size at receiver's end must have to be equal to this uh, window size at sender's end that is equal to 3 both must be equal so uh, suppose window size here is 3 suppose a b c and then d e f g and, and like that goes on at in go back end the window size here was equal to 1 but in this case in uh, selective repeat here also window size would be equal to 3 now what's the difference at in between, uh, between uh, go back end and selective repeat what's the difference if the window size here is 1 or 3 now uh, now you're going to understand this now suppose since all the three all these three packets are in the window it sends a b c it without waiting for acknowledgement for any of these it would send all these three packets and would wait for any acknowledgement as soon as an acknowledgement is received the window would shift accordingly so a b and c are sent suppose that a gets lost okay what would have happened if it was go back n go back 3 uh, it would have discarded b it would have discarded c because they are coming out of order it was expecting zero sequence number and what came was 1 and 2 1 discarded again expecting 0 2 discarded okay and after uh, the timeout uh, after the timeout at the sender send it would send again all the three packets a b and c okay this was happening go back and but in selective repeat the case is a little bit different okay suppose uh, a in in a b and c a got lost okay so but b and c uh, uh, were transmitted so it would not discard b and c because the receiver's window size is equal to 3 it would accept b and c and uh, after the timer acknowledgement timer it would send acknowledgement that it has re received these two packets but not a so the sender would send only a and unlike go back end it won't send all the three packets therefore it is named as select named as selective repeat selective it would send selective packets it would repeat those packets to send okay so then it would send a again and a would be received here and according to the Uh, sequence numbers those would be arranged again a b and c like this now suppose this was the scenario a was lost b and c had received so b has come c has come sequence number of 1 and 2 has come and after uh, the sender's time out a would be sent again then a would come whose sequence number would be 0 now according to the sequence numbers uh, it would be arranged back in order 0 1 and 2 a b and c and then stored and then the accordingly the window would shift forward now suppose consider this situation okay here c d and e would be sent c d e okay what would be the uh, sequence number it would be expecting at this time it would be expecting sequence numbers 2 3 and 0 right uh, suppose packet c got lost what would it get d and e only d and e with sequence numbers what 3 and 0 and after sender's time out it would send c again with sequence number 0 uh, no sorry with sequence number 2 like this now how would it arrange now it it knows that what comes before a sequence number and what comes after like 0 1 2 3 0 One, two, three. It it knows that be, before one it comes zero, and bef after one two comes. Before three two comes. Be after three zero comes. Before two one comes. After two three comes. So what comes after three? Zero. That means this case is perfect. 
d uh, d is before e and e is after e d the order is perfect what comes after 0 after 0 comes 1 then uh, it knows that this is not in order this uh, the receiver knows it what comes af uh, after c sorry not c after 2 after 2 3 comes and before 2 1 comes there is no one here but there is a 3 here so so the receiver infers that c would be c would have been here so c d e uh, 2 3 0 this is the right order and accordingly it stores the packets uh, this is how it uh, processes the data now suppose c was not lost d was lost okay what was it expecting sequence number 2 3 and 0 what did it get c and e with sequence numbers what uh, 2 and 0 and uh, what did and after some time after the timeout d came with sequence number 3 okay it knows what comes after the other 0 1 2 3 0 1 2 3 okay uh, so what comes after 2 0 sorry uh, 1 comes after uh, 3 comes after 2 and 1 comes before 2 but uh, neither there is a 1 nor there is a uh, sorry 3 is there okay before 2 1 comes and after 2 3 comes if uh, this is the right position of c then there must be a there must be 3 here right and if, it's, it, if this is in the correct position of c if c was here or here then at the left of c a sequence number 1 should have been there but there is no one here so c uh, the, the correct position of c is here and uh, since we can see that after 2 3 comes and 3 is here that means d is in between them and after 3 we are seeing that 0 comes so it has been proved that this is the right sequence and it again uh, processes the data and finds out the correct order in this way selective repeat works now suppose again we do the same problem in selective repeat with window size equal to 3 both at the receiver and the sender send there are 10 packets 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and every fifth packet is lost how many packets in total would be transmitted in order to send all the data 1 2 3 4 5 this this would be lost for the first time window size is 3 it successfully sends these three packets then window size then window shifts then again shifts okay but uh, this is not sent right uh, but three has been sent so window shifts five four has been sent window shifts five six seven but uh, this packet since it packet this packet has not been lost and this is not go back and this is, this is selected repeat so only five would be sent again okay and six not six seven so after this one, which one is the fifth packet? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9. 9 would be uh, lost. So again 9 would be sent again. Then we fifth packet 1, 2, no more fifth packet. So how many in total packets are being transmitted? Total 12 packets are being transmitted. Uh, window size is irrelevant here because only packet lost will be transmitted, not the entire window. So it is easily calculated that how many fifth packets will come? Those number plus uh, the total number of packets. That's it. That is the uh, overall number of packets that are transmitted here. Uh, when a packet suppose is corrupted, okay, while sending, it, uh, the receiver acknowledges that the uh, packet has been corrupted. So in go back end, the receiver doesn't do something. It does, doesn't even send any acknowledgement. After the timeout, the sender again sends that packet. Then whether it is corrupted or not, it, uh, it accordingly. Uh, processes, processes it but in selective repeat uh, if the receiver acknowledges that the packet is corrupted then it would send an acknowledgement which is known as a NACO NAKO acknowledgement so that and, and NACO acknowledgement will help the packet to be retransmitted faster and uh, otherwise it would have been sent after the time after the timeout but if you are sending a NACO acknowledgement then it would uh, so as soon as the acknowledgement is received that is uh, that send me the same packet again this packet would be transmitted and in general scenario the acknowledgement would have been would have said that send me the next packet but in NACO acknowledgement it would say that send me the same packet again so uh, okay this was all about selective repeat now in the next next video lecture i would uh, help you 
program the selective feed and go back end first i will help you understand how to code uh, go back end program in java okay thank you